Our God is still on his throne and ruling the affairs of man. Even as he does not change, his truths have not changed. Thankfully, God still has a people which proclaim that old-time religion setting forth his sovereignty and the old paths of truth where we can find rest for our souls. Welcome to Word of Sovereign Grace, a ministry of Paradise Primitive Baptist Church in Arlington, Texas. Get your Bible, call your friends, and sit back as we open the King James Scriptures to explore the glorious Word of Sovereign Grace. Here's this week's message. He 
prepared to follow in a desire or to invoke you as the cause you need. In other words, it's carrying the thought that the Apostle Paul said that I invite you and I want to be able to preach in such a way that you might be invoked to serve the truth in the living God. Because it takes the spirit of the Almighty God that we're gathered together here tonight, that we might lift up our voices to Him, that we might be able to glorify the name of Jesus Christ. So the Apostle Paul said, I beseech you, thy hope. I didn't love the word therefore that he wrote in the Bible. It seems like every time it's used, it's not always used meaning the same thing, but there's a reason why he put it up. And in the sense of this text, it's just as if he is drawing a conclusion about the matter. He said, I beseech you, therefore, pray. I didn't love the way that he had dressed them as pray. Showing that these are not just anyone off the streets out there, but here we're talking about brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. We're talking about someone that the Lord has already shown his grace to, someone that the Lord has already quickened from a dead state of sin and brought him into the marvelous life of an Almighty God. Someone that is not outside of Christ, but has been positioned, pre-positioned in the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Amen. That they have been redeemed by the blood of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. They are still preserved in Him and kept by Him by the power of an Almighty God. Amen. This is the grace of an Almighty God. And I'm convinced tonight that if we do anything that would be God-honoring, that we might serve Him, we're going to need the grace of an Almighty God. Right. That if we are able to prevent our body from living sacrifice, it's going to have to be by the grace of an Almighty God. I want to get into the next word there. I beseech you, powerful brethren, by the mercy of God. You know that word mercy, it carries the thought as the divine compassion of God. That God has so forth his grace, that God has so forth his compassion and his pity upon you, that he sent his only son into the world to die on the cross of Calvary, bleed for your sin, and go to the grave and raise his course over there, that you might live with him in glory. But he said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, showing that only by the mercy of God that you're able to present your body a living sacrifice. I want to back up in Romans just a little bit and just kind of hit a few high places that I might bring forth a subject to you tonight that I trust would be beneficial to us as a church of Jesus Christ. In the first chapter of Romans, uh, you know, sometimes I, I get kind of embarrassed about the first chapter of all of Paul's writings. I get kind of carried away when I begin to think about all the good things that he says just right off the top as he begins to read. He tells us, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. I just love that when he brought this forth that he was a servant of Jesus Christ. This is the same connection that he's dealing with in the first chapter of Romans over there that you present your body a living sacrifice unto God. So the Apostle Paul said, I am a servant of Jesus Christ. The word for he is telling us that I'm not my own. I've been bought with a pie, Christ. I've been paid for by the blood of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And I am indebted to be a servant to Jesus Christ. That I am indebted to serve him because he has done so much for me. I believe when we begin to establish what we ought to be doing as a church of Jesus Christ, it is needful that we establish what Jesus Christ has done for us, that it would promote us to serve the truth in the living God. Notice he said, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. He's bringing forth that he is not only the Savior, but he is the anointed one of God. He is the one that came into the world that he might deliver us from our sins. Isn't that good news to know tonight that not only that yet Jesus Christ was the anointed one, but he was the Savior of sinners. And the Apostle Paul in one place said, in whom I am chief. I believe if we would really look at ourselves and want to look, we would say along with the Apostle Paul that I am the chief of all sinners. That when we begin to feel the grace of God abiding within our very bosom itself, 
there, we would be able to say, surely God has been gracious to us to even let me live upon the face of this earth, misled to be in charity in that number of God's elect that he elected and chose us in him before the foundation of the world. But notice he says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle. He's telling us that I've been bid for, that I have been called for, that I have been chosen of God to be an ambassador for the gospel of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Brother, and I want to tell you how important it is to get out tonight how important the gospel really is. I believe that's power in the gospel of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, but the only power comes from the spirit of an almighty God that embraces us as we come together in the church of Jesus Christ. But then notice he said he was called to be an apostle and separated unto the gospel of God. Aren't you glad today that the Lord is still calling ministers to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ? That he is separating them and consecrating them and making them holy in one sense of the word that they might be fit subject to serve the truth and the living God. We read in Revelation, though without in the first chapter, first chapter, he said he has made us king and priest unto him. I want to tell you, my friends, did you know tonight that in order for us to offer up our bodies there to live and sacrifice unto him, that you had to be made a king and a priest unto him, that you were not worthy to offer up sacrifices unto God by this old picture that we have. We read about Cain and Abel over there in the fourth chapter of Genesis, I believe. When we read about a pain, I, I brought forth uh, the fruit of the ground. I enabled, brought forth the circling of the flock. And it said, and God has respect for Abel and his offering. Uh, and for Cain and his offering, he has not respect. I, I want you to know tonight, my friend, the reason that he had respect for, for uh, Abel's offering was because he had respect Amen. for Amen. Abel. Uh, right. And I'm telling you, uh, in order to bring forth a sacrifice, under God, uh, you've got to be made a priest uh, yeah. under him. Uh, isn't it the good news tonight, my friend, uh, that God has made us kings uh, and priests under him, uh, and he has made you fathers, uh, and he has made you worthy uh, to offer up sacrifices unto God. Uh, yeah. and we ought to get excited about the gospel of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, when we begin to think about what the Lord has done for us, that he has come to us uh, as a special sinner down here, uh, of the found of the same place that he found Jacob over there in a waste out in the wilderness uh, and the Bible tells us uh, and he uh, lifted him up out of that terrible field uh, and he kept him that little apple uh, of his eye uh, and he put him about. Uh, I want to tell you this morning I'm mean, not my friend uh, that if we serve the truth and the living God uh, that's because God found you uh, the same place that he found Jacob over there uh, and he called you out and beat you for out uh, of that pit uh, that you might serve the truth and the living God I'm going to tell you this is the good news of the gospel of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. But he gets into this and he says concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, uh, the seed of David according to the faith and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of uh, from the dead. Did you know that the first thing that the Apostle Paul states in that first chapter is the resurrection uh, of Jesus Christ uh, from the dead? It's telling us that Jesus Christ went to that cross and carried uh, that Jesus Christ died there upon that cross. Uh, and did you know, my friend, that he died there upon that cross? Uh, you died with him, uh, and my friend, uh, uh, when he was buried there uh, in Joseph's new tomb, uh, did you know uh, that you were buried there with him? Uh, but better news to that, my friend, uh, uh, when he rose uh, out of that grave, uh, you rose victorious with him, based upon the blood of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Uh, this is our hope, my friend, uh, that the resurrection of Jesus Christ uh, from the dead. Uh, I love to preach about the resurrection because I feel like someday uh, Jesus is going to come back. And he's going to raise my body out of that grave. And I'm going to be seated at the right hand of the mansion on fire. Not based upon my doing, but based upon the work and the blood and the peace work of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Oh, my friends, we have a great hope. You know, where is your hope tonight? You know, if someone come up to you and 
he left heaven years ago, and he was traveling through the land, and he was going to Mississippi, for instance, and he gets to the Mississippi River, and there wasn't a bridge to cross over, and he didn't see a boat that gets you across the other side, and someone come up to you and said, what are you thinking about? And I'd say, well, I'm going to be on the other side of the river pair this time tomorrow, and somebody would say, well, George, where is where your hope take to come? You don't have a bridge there, and you don't have a boat coming by. And it says, and the, the great storm had come, and the river had had its banks. What do you base that hope upon? Yeah. But you stand there a while, and a boat comes down the river, and a captain comes up by the shore, and he looks out, and he hollers out to you. He said, I'm coming back tomorrow. He said, I'll take you across to the other side. Brother, I want to tell you, now where's your hope? Brother, let's go. We have Jesus Christ, the captain of our salvation. He has promised you that he's going to come again. He promised you that he's going to take you to the other side. And you're going to have faith over there. Isn't that good news? Amen. No wonder that Papa Paul could say, I will seek you. Wherefore, brethren, this is the good news of the gospel of the Son of God. He's coming back. He's coming back. Amen. 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 But he said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God. Yeah. Uh, look where the mercy comes from. They're not your mercy. They're not my mercy. But it comes directly from heaven itself yeah. by the mercy of God. Yeah. And when we begin to think about God, it tells us all that the free duty of God, the divinity of God. I wish I had the ability tonight to tell you what I see in God. Yeah. But I can't explain God. He said, for me, are your way, my way, saith the Lord. For the heavens are higher than the earth. Lord, my way is higher than your way. And my thoughts are your thoughts. I came to see in my mind how great God no, is. No, no. But notice he said, by the mercy of God. Right. Oh, did you know tonight what he can us? He can us. I beseech you, our poor brethren, by the mercy of God, that you forget your body and have good news tonight that telling me that we're able to present something yeah. unto the Lord. And the thing that we're to present is the body. And if it's talking about being a living sacrifice, why is a living sacrifice so important? I want to tell you, my friend, under the old law, they offered up dead sacrifices unto God. And it never did come for sin, but there was a life everlasting in the person of his son, Jesus Christ. He was life himself. He had no beginning and he had no beginning. He is forever or ever and ever more. You know, when I first began to try to preach, I used to try to separate when the Bible says forever and when it said eternal. I'd say, well, eternal is always under and forever is here for the But you know, I can't prove that that is scripture. And I wouldn't try to prove it. But I did find out one thing that the word forever. And the word forevermore and the word eternal. They all came from the same Greek word of meaning the same thing forever. The word found out there's no end to it because it's based upon the blood of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. But he said that you present your body. You know, that word present there, it carries this thought in it that you provide. There's a command that's coming up. That there's a command involved in it that we present our body a living sacrifice unto him. You know, when you look up the word body, most of the time, they strong would tell you that the body that carries the thought of or carnality or carries the thought that the flesh. But in this sense, he takes it a little farther and it carries the thought as the body that carries the soul. Yeah. The soul to tell you yeah. that the spirit of God that dwells in your very heart, yeah. uh, that body that you have, uh, it is the temple of God. Uh, it works out well uh, in your very heart and soul. Uh, and you're not left alone uh, uh, to do it by yourself. Uh, because the spirit, my friend, uh, comes in uh, and it helps you bring your body uh, into subjection uh, yeah. as a living sacrifice uh, that carries the thought uh, as to slay uh, or to bring you subjection uh, to the God. Uh, yeah. And the spirit gets us uh, to that. Uh, yeah. Sometimes we get all caught up and said, uh, I can't do this uh, or I can't do that. Uh, and, uh, 
We said, preacher, we ought to be so thankful for the gospel of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. I'm thankful that the Lord has called me to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm not saying that in a boastful manner. I say that because I feel like the Lord has called me to preach. You know, there may be some that don't understand what I'm talking about, but if the Lord has called you to preach, He also places that desire in your heart to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. It doesn't mean uh, that, uh, that you get going against it all the time. Uh, it doesn't mean uh, that you're on fire every second of the time. Uh, but I want to tell you, when the Lord blesses a man to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he fires him to go a little further on. Uh, uh, when he hears another man preach the gospel of fire in demonstration of the Spirit, uh, that he fires up to go just a little bit further on. Uh, because it's the Lord that's doing the blessing. Uh, I remember old Lord Lester. Uh, I uh, used to live there in our area, uh, and he used to make this statement. Uh, he said to the Lord, uh, uh, blessed me to preach. Uh, he said, I'd rather hear me uh, than anybody. Uh, he said, uh, the Lord, what does that mean to preach? Uh, he said, I'd rather hear anybody uh, than to hear the Lord's lecture. Uh, that's just the way it is, my friend. Uh, and I wonder why it was that way. Uh, and because when the Lord blesses you, uh, you are experiencing uh, the glory uh, of an all family God. Uh, and when he blesses that message to your congregation, uh, it's trying to pull their heart. Uh, and it's showing that God uh, is still revealed by His Spirit. Uh, what the minister says, uh, and to a command to your heart, and full of the material, uh, they might lift up faith unto God. Isn't that good news? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I notice, he said, louder and dearer and dearer time, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Right. He's telling us that you may be proved, that you might be tested. You're going to be tried, my friend. But aren't you glad it's for grace? Yeah. Oh, I love grace. Yeah. Notice he said, for I say through the grace given unto me. I just love the way he put it out. I say by the grace given unto me. You, you know what grace is? Yeah. It's an American gift. Yeah. It's a divine favor bestowed upon you from God. But it's more than that. It carries a form. It is a divine influence of the heart and its reflection in the life. It's coming up. If God comes down and by his spirit, he directs and he wants the very heart and soul of an individual life. And it ought to reflect in our life. We might be able to serve him as the true and living God. Notice he said, for I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according to God has dealt to every man who made it the place. God gives you the gift. God gives you the faith. The exercise the gift that he has given to you. No wonder that Papa Paul stopped speaking to you by four brothers and brothers and sisters in Christ. Yeah. But I had a message tonight is that I might inspire you, that I might provoke you, that I might call you near, that you might want to serve the true and living God. One that has done so much for us. Amen. One that is still doing good things for us. He's still going to do some more good things. I thank you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, tree of Paradise Primitive Baptist Church in Arlington, Texas. Paradise Primitive Baptist Church is located at 5300 Mansfield Road in Arlington, Texas. Services begin at 1030 each Sunday morning. Plan to come and worship with us. To find out more about Paradise Primitive Baptist Church, visit www.paradisepbc.org. Be sure to visit our website for articles, video, and audio sermons, as well as biblical answers to your questions. Thanks for watching, and be sure to join us again next week. May God richly bless you.